Absolutely seamless. Uh, now, uh, moderators, uh, apparently there's rumours that we might get some low IQ people here uh, saying stupid things. Don't ban them because I'm considering suing for slander. Um, the thing about when you take someone to court for slander or libel, the, the weight of it is on damages. Is on it's on damages, you know. You, you 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 can get someone in a bit of trouble for saying things about you, but if you can show damages, if for instance you've been if you're a professional writer and you've been working on something for six years, or if you're a business owner and your reputation is reflected in your income, you can get these people. Now I know there's no evidence that I'm a paedophile. <laughs> because I'm not. So I'm actually considering um, a legal case. So if they do come here, don't ban them because it gets rid of the, the messages. Uh, and we can put up with them. Come on, what a couple of people go, mm, you fucked a dog. Okay. No, I didn't. Right. Okay. So this is going to be amazing. I, it's, to be honest with you, I wasn't going to stream today because I had so much on. And then I saw that the footy started at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> this is a, 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 um, a, a three. Oh, it's not a three anything. It's a, it's a, a pre footy stream, but I've got some wicked clips. Just, it just interesting things like a bit of this, bit of that, bit of humor, bit of writing, not mine. Uh, but a bit of David Foster Wallace, a bit of visceral stuff, a bit of uh, the opposite of that. <laughs> Cerebral, perhaps. There you go. Um, yeah, don't worry. You don't need to worry about it, Brian. Well, you know, you haven't been on the end of it. You know, you haven't been on the end of it. And, uh, you know, there's consequences. Um, hello, Joe. How are you, son? I didn't watch it, Lulu. I, I didn't watch it. I, I, I heard about it in the uh, in the Scrubs lifeboat, but you know, doesn't 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 bother me. No gold borsch. Not comments. It's not not comments at all. Um, Marsh. Apparently, you've been a member for nineteen months. Did I get that right? Hoit to that. Hoit to that. Which will make it even funnier, John. Uh, no worries. Forget about that. I don't want it interrupting more. To... Yeah, I'm a British citizen. Right. Okay. Where are we? Hello, Richard. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Hello, Tito. How are you, mate? You'll be right. What's the name? Unless you want to. Hello, Matt. Colonel Custard. Lulu. Gold Balsh. ST3. Hello, Bullet. How are you, son? John, historical doppelgangers in. What a treat. Uh, honestly. Hello, Pags. How are you, son? <laughs> Apart from Packer. How are you, mate? Good to see you. Hello, JP. Hello, Scrubs. Can't talk at the moment, so lurking. <laughs> this is a weird thing to say while you can't, but I get it. I get it. You sneaked one in. Hello, Della. Good to see you. Lumi. Fuck off, I had to ask what that was. And then I ended up having having Mr. Me in it tell me about gulling. Gulling. Hello, Livy. Livy, did you follow me on Twitter? LC350, good to see you. Ether Elephant, hello, mate. A pleasure. Right, um, where are we going to start then? Uh, you know, I've got one, two, I've got a few. I think we'll probably do about an hour and a half here. Hello, Carl. How you getting on? Hello, the boy Cray. Look at ranks and the boy Cray rank. rock up side by side like the army, like the military. Um, where to start? I had something to tell you. I had something to tell you before I started, but oh yeah, I heard about an hour ago. Now the bloke who told me, I um, hello Jcav seventy six. Shout out to the Twitch miniature. <laughs> No problem. It was you, Libs. Nice one. Hello, Void. Evening all. Had a day off work today, so binge watched your 
Dragon's Den series. Brilliant content, Danger. It's weird, Void. I'm actually getting new subscribers. YouTube are suggesting it to people. I, you know, look, I know that when you call your streams things like Super Duper Exquisite Monday Chill Stream Plus, YouTube can't really, you know, that's tricky to who do you suggest that to? What 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 you know, what area is that in? But Dragon's Den reaction video, if people watch a lot of Dragon's Den, they're gonna get suggested it. Uh, and amazing, um, amazing comments as well. And comments from names I don't know. So, yeah, it's uh, going quite well. I put a new one out tonight, actually. It, I, I don't know how it works, so. So I recorded it, about 45 minutes, uploaded it, and it said, no, this is blocked in all territories, which is the world. I imagine it's the world, and maybe it covers other galaxies and things, solar systems. Um it said there's copywritten material between 29.32 and 31. So about two and a half minutes. Yeah, but it's the same show. You know, it was a 14 minute or 10 minute or something like that show, right? Just that Dragon's Den. I used all of it. I chip in as much as possible so they don't do this. And then they just say, no, nah, that bit, that two minutes is copyrighted. Copywritten, sorry, or whatever. So I, I trimmed it out. I got rid of it. So that's, there's a weird jump cut in it. And then it went, yeah, you're all right. You're good to go now. Something's going wrong there. Now, it might get banned later. Who knows? Who knows how it works? But, you know, that's just bizarre. But it, it, it's up, so that's good. Hello, Special K. Good to see you. And you've just reminded me. Hello, Mr. Fuse. Hello, Mike. How are you, son? What un plaisir. Good luck. Hello, Charlie. Nice to see you. Yeah, yeah. It says you. it's banned the world. It says, it's, first of all, it says this is blocked in all territories. And then when you click it, it says no one in the world can see this. And I'm sitting there going, well, I can. Hello, Wolfie. Good to see you, son. Foot Golf says today is the 10th anniversary of the Kumfelling Club gig. That was my worst performance in uh, Swansea, though, Richard. The two that I loved that meant... Hello, Barney. The two, Richard, that meant uh, something to me, I think you know them, it was that place that... Uh, the cinema, I can't remember what it's called, but if you're ever in Swansea, Richard will tell you the name of it in a minute, go and support them. They, they, didn't, they refused to shut down with the COVID and got in a lot of trouble and it went to court and all that luck. Um, but a really cool venue. And all the seats are futons. So, and you get, you know, two people to each futon. Lovely, comfortable, laid back. Wonderful for a, a comedian because everyone's like laid out. They're all like proper relaxed, not all squashed in. And, it, and there's about, I don't know, 10, 15 Two, two or three rows, maybe four, is it, Richard? Four rows along, so four futons along and about 10. So max capacity of about 80. I don't think I filled it. Probably had about 60 or something. But that was a cracking gig. One, one. Listen to this. I am blowing my own trumpello here. One bloke was talking during a bit where I didn't want someone talking because I was building up tension. I went, are you, are you heckling me? He went, I was just... Tell, I just told him, mate, you're a genius. <laughs> I felt well bad. I went, oh, uh, okay, that, that's very kind of you. That's got to be some of the best, um, some of the best heckling I've ever had. Thank you, Void. Thank you. I mean, it's kind of pointless showing Dragon's Den. You know, when I watch Dragon's Den, because I've got history as an entrepreneur, success and failure, and uh, and in between, whatever's in between. I, when I watch it, I think, oh, that would be interesting if someone pointed this out or someone pointed this out. So I just thought, we'll do it. And, yeah, they've uh, what, what a peculiar thing that they've taken off. People seem to like them. And I, I like doing them as well. Hello, Hans. Good to see you. And the other one, Richard, not just the cinema. I wish I could remember the name of it. The other one was the gig when I when I when I had uh, thingy uh, Ben Krellin supporting me. That was a one of my fantastic uh, gigs. 
42 says, I was watching a dragon's den and missing a live. <laughs> so, sorry about the uh, congestion of content, 42. Hope you're well, mate. As I hope everyone is well. Right, let me tell you, uh, if I've missed saying hello to anyone, I will as we, uh, as I'll, I'll catch up with people as we go in. Thank you, Hans. Yeah, I think they're going, it's going well, man. So a friend told me, I haven't had a chance to check it, but I trust him. He hasn't, not that I know, he's not, he's not a liar, he's not an exaggerator. But apparently, hello, ultra mega Essex boy. Good Lord, it's got to be about six o'clock in the morning, isn't it, where you are? Nice to see you, mate. Oh, did you see it? I Listen, people, if ever you go to a Japanese restaurant, I'm not talking like yo sushi. <laughs> I'm not talking about like uh, some ramen shack, but a proper Japanese restaurant. Obviously, that would be in Japan, but a proper place. Buy the chef a sake. That's traditional. It shows ma good manners. It shows that... It shows an understanding and a knowledge, a knowledge of Japanese culture. Now, imagine you're a chef and you're working in a different country making your traditional cuisine. And someone from the country you're working in comes up to you and does something traditional. That's quite a respectful gesture. And uh, so I've gone in, I've sat down and I said, first thing, and the kitchen, it's an open kitchen. It's a fucking nice place. If you come to Phnom Penh, Go to Aizu Japanese. It's about 36 floors up, one of the highest buildings in Phnom Penh. And the, the restaurant's all glass walls, so you can see the whole of the city. And it's it's amazing. I'll show you the food, actually. So um, I bought in this sake. I said, can you buy the chef a sake? So they brought the sake menu over. And I, I was looking at the, 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 the... There was one there for like $90. I was thinking, yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> a classic marketing trick is to have three. You'll see this most places. You, you, when you go into a, a restaurant and you want a bottle of red, they'll have three. Most of the time, you know, mid-range restaurants, they'll have three. They'll have a really expensive one, a really cheap one, and then a slightly expensive one. Because everyone goes for the slightly expensive one, which is still more than you You know, if you didn't feel judged, you'll just go, no, just give me the cheapest one. I ain't going to be able to taste it over the two pound of salt I put over my dinner. But so there was one for like $80, $90, one for about 30 and one for about 12 I said, oh, let him decide, let him decide. And I, I looked on the menu and they didn't even charge me for the sake I bought him. So that was miraculous. But he's come over. Brian, you absolute wonderful bastard. Long time, no donation, cost of living cry. No, tell me about it, mate. Absolutely. That's incredible. Thank you, Brian. Props to that. You didn't get a VARP, though, which I don't know if that's right. A, a bullseye. Um, let me refresh Entropy, and I'll VARP you in manually. I'll give you a mega VARP, because... There we are. It's just popped up. Brian's megavart time. Strap yourselves in, people. If you haven't heard it before, it can cause damage to your temporal lobes. Here we go. <laughs> I do that sort of thing when I sit here on my own. Thank you, Brian. Up on Tom Tom. That's amazing. So I, I bought him this sake, and then he comes over, the chef comes over, and he says, he, he goes like this, look at that, look, Dennis felt the super vart, didn't you? He felt it. Probably responding to something else. Uh, he come over and he said, he was like, oh, go on, go on, go on, go on. Japanese fella, but speaking Khmer. And I said, no problem, no problem. And, and, he, and he was really, really thankful, really thankful. And then he come back, about 10 minutes later, and he'd made me and my missus uh, uh, three sushis each, right? Three little sushis, I suppose you'd call them. Sushi. <laughs> that ain't on the menu. And one of them had real gold on it, gold leaf. Now, my missus is a peasant girl. 
And I said to her, that's real gold. And she was going, no, well, well not like that. She's not like some cockney. She didn't go, no, it ain't. <laughs> she was like, what is it? No. And I said, that's real gold. And I got someone to confirm. And so she's then taking it off. I said, no, you eat it. Interestingly, she asked a very pertinent, perhaps, question. Why? <laughs> Why? And I was like, because it looks beautiful. It's indulgent. And I've got a photo of it. Here, I'll show you. If you follow me on Telegram, link in the description, you get this kind of quality content. But I'll show you. Look, this is beautiful. I mean, you know, to go... This wasn't charged, by the way. This wasn't on the... Uh, and if you like sushi, you'll understand why this was amazing. And we got one of these each. Have a look at this. Look at that. Look at that. So there's your real gold on that one. That's fatty tuna. That's what the fish is. And like a biscuit. Can't remember what that one was. Can't remember what that one was. But look how beautiful and delicate it all is. Look at him knocking that up for the pair of us. And, you know, and I'm t here's why I'm telling you things like this. Because my missus thinks I'm the Don. She just thinks I'm the Don when the chef comes over and presents us with food that you can't buy. You know, she was looking through that she wanted it because she's a peasant. She, she wanted to see how much it costs, how much, how much food, free food did they give us? Of course, it's not on the menu. And I said to her, it's not on the menu. He's made that for us. And to be a sushi chef is like 25 years training. You know, th 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 this is a man who's... And I'll show you the gold. I made a little video of it. But if you can... Put, I had things like that in Soho where I'd, you know, got myself in. And when you take a bird out, for instance, when you walk into a restaurant in Mayfair and the bird's all like, wow, this is a bit posh, and you go, no, we'll be right. And you go in and go, oh, Mr. Dangerfield, may I take your coat? And then the, and then the MC comes over and sort of sort of... He goes, ah, oh, hello, Chris. How are you, sir? Usual table. We're like, yeah, no, no problem, no problem. It was, it's amazing. And it only takes a little bit of courtesy, a little bit of, you know, friendliness, you know, and, and, and obviously, if I, you know, my brother lives in Japan. That's what I know about the sake thing. He said to me, if ever you go, because I told him about the Japanese place. But uh, look, we'll have a little look at the, you'll see me, you'll see me fingering, <laughs> chopsticking, the uh, gold leaf. I did try and stick a bit on my teeth and really ruin the uh, the the atmosphere. I'll mute myself so you can hear me mumbling. Check out the real gold on my sushi. <laughs> now, I will be honest with you. Charlie's on the firm. She's on the firm. Charlie's on the firm. She's on the firm. Nice one, Charlie. Machano Kushpanati. Now, I will sometimes with freebies, though. Like, that restaurant is very traditional. You know, you're not going to get your California rolls in there, which is your crab stick, avocado, bit of cucumber. <laughs> that's not happening so you have to be a little bit you know you, i mean i'm i will i will try most things but when he comes over and he says that's fatty tuna you know in it in the english language that isn't appetizing is it fatty tuna sounds like what you'd call the down syndrome girl at your primary school <laughs> But I noticed I said you. Um, so, and also I was thinking, oh, no, man. You know, these are like proper deli sushi delicacies. And I found in life, the more the delicacy, the more the, the this ain't very nice. So, <laughs> no, 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 no. Goats uh, testicles are a delicacy. Yeah, but they're still goats testicles. But actually, they were. It was all absolutely delicious. It really that, that little freebie. What a way to start the evening! So that was nice. And the bill, I, I think they gave us money off. I tipped him a fiver because the bill was like forty dollars for the pair of us. We didn't drink any alcohol. Restaurants tend to make most of their money out of booze. 
But you know, we had we had some smoked duck, smoked duck. We had we had some king clams with oh king clams with mango sauce. Good lord, what else did we have? We had some salmon carpaccio, very thinly sliced salmon in sort of like a sour sort of, I don't want to say gravy. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't even think of slices of raw salmon in Bisto. Yeah, it's lovely, lovely. Anyway, I've got a few scrubs coming out here this year. So um, I might, if when there's one bloke turning up with a couple of his mates and the me in it have, have whispered uh, the possibility both of that lot i'll take to that restaurant and uh see if the chef can make up <laughs> eight free meals <laughs> they'll be going oh no not the fucker with the fucking buying the chef a sake <laughs> he'll come over with a baguette one night go, yeah i'll just chew on that until your dinner's ready right what i heard that you might be able to confirm don't worry people um this is this is Brian, I'm still very thankful, mate, for dropping a bullseye in. That uh, means the world. I know everyone's skin. I absolutely know it. Myself, myself too. Willow, my dad used to make it. My dad used to make sake. And, uh, yeah, when it's, um, when it's sitting in the, in the Demijohns brewing and my dad's talking to his mate going, nah, be ready in a couple of days. Me and my brother were sticking straws in it. No, I didn't mean to, Mum. I can't walk. <laughs> right. Um, where are we? Where are we? Hello, Mr. Salmon. I was just talking about you, Carpaccio. <laughs> Packer said it's on a dod of wood. I don't know what that is. Hello, watching the telly. How are you? No, do it, man. Nothing wrong with egg and chips, is it? Hello, Arius. Good to see thee. <laughs> okay <laughs> slow down you fucker i'm on 1.5 times trying to catch up <laughs> right hello rp good to see thee so someone has told me there you go to the devil misses me in it mouse cat it's fish defo not a jew fish you would notice if i dragged the whole swordfish through the house with beak still attached I've eaten swordfish. I didn't feel very nice about eating swordfish, but, you know. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It was Belinda Mardell, but, you know, never mind. <laughs> Colonel Custard says, Fatty Tuna is also my wife's pet name. Yeah, you, you, the, the grammar has done you up a bit there, Custard, because that suggests it's her pet name. What, for you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does work either way. Hello, Mr. Francis. How are you, son? Peculiar looking bloke who presents Dragon's Den, isn't he? Oh, I know it's coming every time. Hello, Mr. Hess. Pleasure. Right, so someone... Hello, La. I'm not getting through this, am I? Nice to see everyone turning up, though, you absolute beauts. So someone told me in America, 300 people a day are dying of fentanyl overdoses. 300 people a day. Now, I haven't had time to check it. It was a few minutes before the stream. If anyone wants to look that up now, I mean, I know there's 300 million people out there, but hello, Vorpal Anvil. Good to see you, mate. Um, 300 people a day. Now, is... It, no, you're right, actually. You, I, I kind of, I, you know, just, you know, even 300, though, is ridiculous. Now, here's the problem. Here's the pro I've had fentanyl, right? Fentanyl is ridiculously stronger than heroin. But there's another one called carfentanyl, which is even stronger than fentanyl. Now, here's the problem. You can produce a shoebox full of fentanyl for about hundred dollars right that it's just a chemical you just bosh 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 fentanyl to produce the same amount of heroin you're going to need about five football pitches full of poppies right so what's going to happen is 
the smack, the heroin is going to start depleting in production because the people who run that business will think, well, hang on a minute. Why don't we just grow a quarter as much of the skag? Fill it up with filler and then just pop a bit of fentanyl in it, which is why people are dying, because that's what they're doing anyway. That's what the dealers are doing. And I'll tell you now, there is not a junkie on the planet that would rather have fentanyl over heroin. Not a chance. It's not the same. It's it feels chemical. It feels it, it doesn't feel like skag. And you people like skag. They like the history of it. They like the story of it. They like the idea of poppies. They like all that stuff. And fentanyl's not only going to remove the heroin market in about 10, 15 years, maybe, but it's going to just keep killing people. The only way to stop fentanyl from killing junkies is to give them heroin. And, and they won't do it. And you know why? Because they're looking after them. They're protecting them. Ridiculous logic. An absolute logic. Right, here we go. Um, where should we start? Where should we start? Have you noticed I'm actually using a light? I've got a light over there. Oh, ah, this channel's going places. Don't worry about that. Right, here we go. Um, so I'll probably get in trouble for playing this, but I'm going to start it about here. I really should have found a... There was a bloke. There was a. He made a movie called Man on a Wire. Damn. Why have I got this clip? My, uh, of all the clips to get, I got this one. Let me see if I can just find Man on a Wire trailer instead. Man on a Wire trailer. So this is our, this, I've got the trailer. It's only two minutes. We should be right. Don't forget, people, if I do get a community guidelines you can't show that live i'll be back in about three minutes that's what happens i don't have to start a new stream i'm gonna i haven't watched the trailer but i just want you to know if you haven't seen this documentary called man on a wire this man has got a passion for tightrope walking all right now when the twin towers were standing they just finished building them in fact they were still like they hadn't quite finished right and he was he looked at them from he lived in France, yeah. And he thought, I wonder if I can get in into one of those towers, <clears throat> harpoon a wire to the other tower, then get into the other tower, get to the top, and tie it up, and then come back another day with some a camera crew and a fucking balance stick and walk across the twin towers it's a beautiful documentary uh i think in other countries it might have had a different name but the whole you can watch the whole thing on youtube i think man on a wire and i really really suggest you watch it i i, I again i've said this so many times i stumbled into it because i'm making this doc scripted video about living a life of passion and I remembered him and I remembered that documentary. So let, let's have a look at the trailer. Hopefully I'll get through it. It's only a couple of seconds. But I really recommend this documentary. I remember crying when I watched it, which I'm prone to do. Not a kind of lovey-dovey stuff, although occasionally. But when I see people achieve things that, are, that mean something to them and that also etch themselves into the sort of cultural history of our people... Um, let's have a look at this. Uh, let me sort out my headphones so that I can ruin everything and interrupt it. But uh, <laughs> John says this is going to set my vertigo off. <laughs> well, if this doesn't, nothing will. Uh, give us a second, people. I have to interrupt these things occasionally. Uh, it gives me more chance of not getting uh, shut down. Okay, it would appear I'm already uh, connected. Uh, 
no interest in. Right, let me just shut down my BitTorrent and all the videos I haven't been downloading. Right, that's good, that's good. Right, here we go. Uh, have a look at this. This is the trailer for Man on a Wire. True story about a bloke who put a wire across the Twin Towers and walked across them. Amazing. What a thing to do. He's still alive now. He's an old fella now. We'll have a look at that in the next video. Let me know you can hear it. Go. I have never obstructed something. He said, well, I want to I string a wire between the, the two World Trade Center towers. I, know. I obviously don't want to stop it, but, you know, for reasons of uh, YouTube's political expediency, let's go. Cheers, Toffee. He was a nut or a con man or something. As a child, I love to climb. Nobody could stop me. If you want something, nothing is impossible. He told me he was a French journalist. It's impossible, that's sure. So let's start working. It was 200 feet between the towers. And there were going to be some guys in the North Tower. The whole idea would be that Jean Louis would. 200 foot. <laughs> Look at John doing the off. Hello, Anglo. <laughs> be right back. 200 feet, people, between the two towers. And very high. What did it say? 210 floors or something? I mean, I'm not good with heights. You know, I'll stand up in the morning and fall over. <laughs> that might be for other reasons, though. Send the arrow from one building to another. What? We just weren't ready. Man. I didn't want to be liable for the death of a friend. Why did you do this? Police took a humorless view of the act. Why did Where you do it? You? There is no way. beyond anything you can ever imagine. Mind-boggling. Look at it! No. Did, did you see that? And what a fantastic line. And that 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 is what we're talking about with passion. There is no why. That's beautiful. That That's living a poetic life. He didn't even want to go there. Didn't he, Didn't need to go there. You know, someone asked him why. And he hadn't even got, he hadn't even considered that. Didn't need to. It was about doing. It was about living. It was about it was about him. Anything you can ever imagine. My... Look, look at that fella. Anglo, fair play, mate. Machano, Rashitutano. Look at that, people. Look, he, but it's not not just the yeah, Toffee. Honestly, it's fucking great. It's really, really good. Richard said I'd ruin the ending, but, you know. But not just doing it, but getting the wire up, you know, that, that that's... Uh, yeah, but Charlie, that's, that's you know, if you start, if you, if you are... I never ask why I'm writing this or why I do this, why I make a channel. You know, just get on with it. Because the problem with why is... You know, we've got to look beyond the pleasure principle here. We're all, no one gets out alive. So if you start asking about why, you're always going to come back to the same. No real reason. And that's a negative. Whereas if you just ignore that because you're a breathing, living, active person, you, you, you achieve things, you do things. You, you, you engage in joissance. I saw his face changing. Now I'm going to perform. This is probably the end of my life to step on that one. Death is very close. Look! He regardez, regardez. And he has saved Figured I was watching something that somebody else would never see again in the world. Thought it was once in a lifetime. Life should be lived on the edge. This is what we're here for. See every day as a true challenge, and then you live your life on the tightrope. 
That is a fantastic line. That's a fantastic line. Live every day on the edge and then you see your life as a tightrope. And you might think, well, hang on a minute, that's a bit risky, but your life is already on a tightrope. So to acknowledge that, to acknowledge it is. I know that we've got people in the chat who've got very serious illnesses. I know we've got people in the chat whose lives have fallen apart. I know that my life has fallen apart. I ended up living on the street. I ended up homeless. You know, life is a tightrope. You are always balancing. You are struggling along that very thin line with external forces pushing you this way and that way, and it's a long way down. Uh, so that, I didn't actually plan to watch that, so we'll go back and have a little look at what I actually had lined up, which I can't find now. <laughs> Hang on, that's a bit weird. Hang on. Was it maybe that one? Oh, hang on, it'll be in my list. Wow. Oh, so all about 150 other videos. I'll tell you what, people. I, I, I thought I'd find some... Um, I thought I'd find something amazing that happened in snooker. Because <laughs> snooker was quite a thing back in the day. And I found something like the top 10 controversial moments in snooker. Fuck me, man. Insomnia cure. It was shocking. It was like this bloke went, okay, and now we've rounded up the 10 most controversial snooker happenings of the last 40 years. First one, Cliff Thorburn, you know, the mate Cliff. He, hits, he gets out of a snooker, he hits the green, and then the ref calls foul. And Thorburn's like, what? He says, yeah, you didn't, you didn't nominate a colour. And all the audience go, yes, he did, because he did. He goes green. But he, did, he didn't go, oi, death, sorry, ref, green. He just went green. And all the, all the crowd went, he did. And the ref was like, no, Alex Higgins, seven points. <laughs> I thought, wow, the snooker controversies ain't really cutting it. Uh, it, was, it did actually make peculiar viewing, though. Someone in the chat who said that. Hello, Gary. Good to see you. Oh, and that is a bad miss. Uh, no, it's a duck. You know, I was talking to a mate the other day about the beauty of television, which it lost. It died. You know, television was beautiful for a while because it was basically being made. TV programs were being made by late 60s art school acid heads. And I, I mean that. I, I absolutely mean that. You know, the people who went into... I know telly was around earlier than that, but it didn't really pick up until, really, the early 70s. And so you've got all these trippers coming out of college, getting work in media, which is what the art school funnel tends to do. When you're at art school, it's all fucking... But, of course, when you're out and in your first year, you've sold no pieces of work. You just get a job in telly, in the media. And so that's why you had wicked things like the Magic Roundabout and, and all the other bizarre things. You know, they hadn't really worked out what television was or its power. But one of the beautiful things about telly, and I think it really reached its sort of pinnacle in the 80s, was the, the, the national, the sort of, what would it be? The shared experience of a nation. Now, even as a, what would that have been, about 10 years old, I didn't really understand Dirty Den and Angie's divorce and her pretending she was dying. You know, I was 10. But I, what I did understand, because kids, you know, four or five-year-olds, they might run around going, I like frogs, I like frogs, I like frogs, but they're dealing with the mega, the, the meta-narratives of life. You know, they're dealing with life. Death, abandonment, lack, loss, decay. Because they have to. Because that's what that's all they know. You know, they, they've got something and then they haven't got something. And they're like, well, hang on a minute. I felt a lot better when I had it. Like mother's tit, for instance. And then later, mum. Where's mum gone? No, I like it when she's here. What do you mean she ain't coming back till tomorrow? <laughs> you know, this, these are big deals. So when you're about 10, although you don't really understand Dirty Den and Ange, you understand the impact of it. 
because it takes a lot for your family to turn away from Christmas dinner, turn their chairs round after my mother spent three days making that quite unpleasant food, to put EastEnders on. And, you know, in those days, it would be recorded, you know, like 33 million people tuned in to EastEnders. And the beauty of it was that you knew the nation was watching it. And that, that just doesn't happen so much now. That's why when you have sizable events like Trump, like Brexit, you know, that's when you, you sort of get that buzz. All that 2016 stuff, we mentioned it the other day, the whole, the whole Pepe thing, the Kekistan and all that, the, the, the arrival of mean, mean Magic and Chardonnay, it felt, I just got varted out. Did you hear the VAR or is it just my brain that will never recover from it? I'm all right, though, because it's, it's a grift. So I'll take a few uh, synapses. Can you let me know if you heard it? Hello, October. But, Bullet, I'll, I'll read that in a minute, mate. But, um, you know, it's that sense that there's a, a community engaging in something. And now more than ever we need these things because there's less and less of them. There's less and less communities. And wasn't it wonderful to just put a picture of Pepe on Facebook and all, all your normie mates just didn't get it and you'd suddenly have your, your right-wing friends come out of the woodwork and when they wrote Chardonnay underneath or, or similar. And, and, and a community was formed. Yeah, amazing. And television done that in the 80s. You know, there was like, you know, do you remember, I was never a big fan of Doctor Who but when it was the end of a series and he was going to transform into the new one, everyone was watching it. It was on all, it was on all the TV programs for like two weeks beforehand. Who's it going to be? Oh, it might be him. It might be him. Oh, God, what if it's him? What if it's him? You know, that, that sense of a viewing nation. And I doubt we'll ever get that again. I doubt we'll ever get that again because... Because there isn't like a, a meta media anymore. Interestingly, the mass media doesn't exist. It, it, it swallowed itself. And, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. Lil Bullet, Fiverr, cheers. I'd rather learn to tightrope walk than have someone shave me with a cutthroat razor. I'd never let anyone do that to me for any amount of money. I'll tell you what, Bullet, nice one for the lady. I like a, I like a nice wet shave with a razor. I've had my neck right back with a big old Turkish bloke. There used to be a Turkish uh, barbers in Dartford, and I quite like it. You do have to put a fair amount of trust in someone, though. If I was told I've got a tightrope walk the Twin Towers, or I have a wet shave with a razor... <laughs> Put it like this, I won't be, I wouldn't be tightrope walking. What is it, bullet? Is it is that hello Dax? Is that is that a oh you couldn't hear the VAR? Cheers, it's a duck. Is is bullet, is it a real fear of razors or something? Or is it you just um <laughs> Charlie, no vartage my end. <laughs> Rag says state brainwashing. What EastEnders? <laughs> I don't know. There is a place for just entertainment, you know. Hello, Flammer. Rags said VAR. Rags is providing the VARs. Yeah, there you go, Lulu. And it was because of that, wasn't it? If if it was like a show that you knew hardly anyone watched, it doesn't have that, it didn't have that same impact. It was, you know, I, I didn't understand EastEnders. I was 10. Who cares? But knowing everyone cared, knowing everyone was watching it was 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 where, where the value came from. Okay, nice one. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's just Turkish barbers laundering money. I mean, they do still have to cut air. I think a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, cash businesses are laundering money. No, of of all ethnicities. Um. 42 says EastEnders is now, without a doubt, I've said it myself, 42. I used to live on the old Ford Road, which runs parallel with Roman Road, which runs from Bethnal Green to Bow. And people I know who worked in the BBC said that EastEnders was based on one of the squares down on Roman Road. Now, 
if that's the case, I'm sorry. <laughs> East Enders would be about 70% Afro Caribbean, 20% Middle Eastern, and and then a few white drug addicts. <laughs> it's this it, 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 I have watched East Enders recently because well I, I won't go into why, but I watched a couple of episodes because someone wanted me to watch something. And I just thought, what what part of East London looks anything like this? You know, your token Indian family, nah, <laughs> nah. There is nowhere. You have got to go so far east, you'll end up in um, Holland before you're going to get a place as white as that in East London. <laughs> Ridiculous. Well, why have I got this one open? That doesn't need opening. Right. So a massive jump because it is a clip stream, and I've been I've got I've been talking for forty seven minutes. I've only got an hour left. I'm going to show you a machine, and the weird thing is, I uh, I've showed this machine on this channel before. <laughs> <coughs> now I'm going to take it back. Fucking Ada, I'm going to have to just turn me interior. I'm going to have to turn my interior monologue down. I mean the interior vault down because that was ridiculous. Bullet! It just freaks me out. I could do it myself, but the thought of letting someone else do it freaks me out. Not enough money on the planet. I can, I, I do understand that, though, uh, little bullet. I can't have people take blunt from me. My GP and so I used to let me do it myself. No, I, no I've got no problem. But when those fucking phlebotomists try it, I look like a stigmata just standing there dripping blood, like white as a ghost. Going, you better give me a mouse, but I'm going to be sick. So I do sort of get it. I do, you know, but I, I haven't got a problem with a, a wet shave. Um, <laughs> 42 went in for the crystal brochurette, and Pags corrected him. You're allowed to say it now, but it's you that mentioned it, not me. The hex is on you. You know, um, have a look at this logging machine. Now, that might sound boring, but think about being a lumberjack. I'm not quite sure what they do. I think they work with trees, don't they? Imagine getting a tree. Imagine chopping it down. Imagine chopping off all the branches and then cutting it into the right size logs. One tree is going to take about five men about three hours to do that. I'm guessing, because obviously I've never done that. I'd imagine it would be about that. Maybe Even if it's half that time. That's a lot of men, a lot of man hours, and quite dangerous. Now, machines are replacing manual labour. Is that a bad thing? No, not entirely. Is it a good thing? Not entirely. Things have consequences, and we have to work through them. But just check out this bit of kit here. I mean, I'm not into the machines. I'm lying, or I wouldn't be showing you this. Have a look at this machine. It's ridiculously uh, functional. <laughs> it's ridiculously effective. Here we go. Log patrol. Let's go. Hello, Mars Lab. Check it. Cut it off. So let's cut it off, turned it over, stripped it, chopped it. Look at that. Stripped it, chopped it. How incredibly satisfying is that? Yeah, I get I feel a bit like that. And then look, it's on to the second tree. What how long did that take? 40 seconds. I was about to say 42 seconds, but <laughs> that sounds a bit weird. <laughs> I don't want Emma to get narky with me if I mention 42 seconds. <laughs> Look at it. What an incredible design. Fuck, old Frickens Armitage Shanks invented the log machine. <laughs> I've just got it. I've just got it. There you go, a little bit of machinery for you. <laughs> you don't, you, you get anything you want around here. 
well anything i want but you know if if you're generous now the next clip when i was sitting with bally g out in thailand a few days ago um my hotel sells sells weed because you can in, in thailand now so I got myself some critical orange, and I'll tell you what, it smelled like cherries, uh, Terry's chocolate orange, right? And I've put, I, I don't smoke weed on the regs, so I still get very, very stoned. I'm not like one of these tolerance boys who just, you know, I'm not a stay high. So I wrap one up, and I'm sitting there smoking it, and of course, regretting it immediately, started, started thinking, what, have I, what am I doing with my life? What the fuck's happened? How old am I? Where am I? But after that horrible initial sort of punch in the paranoid face, it you know it, it's rather lovely. So there I was sitting there just enjoying looking about up and down that road that has had many many emotional events for me. And then Bawley turns up, and he knows when I'm stoned, and then he just starts performing. And he, he said it. He said, I like, I said, sorry, I'm stoned, mate, because he doesn't smoke weed, doesn't like it at all. I said, sorry, I'm stoned, mate. He said, oh, I love it. I can say anything. And you just crack up. And he just kept making jokes, and I was crying with laughter. And then he, he went, he went, ah, 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 the monkeys are coming. And I was like, what? I cracked up. I went, what the fuck is that? He said, oh, you know what that is. Anyone in the chat tell me what that is. I, I think I, I've kind of I've quoted it well enough. For, for if you know it, you'll know it. <laughs> Arius, who was watching me on one point five, says I've caught up. Now you sound silly. Talk faster. It's not the Wizard of Oz. Well, it might be just a different version. Going on with this vape. It's not the theme tune to the monkeys, Willow. Well, anyway, it's one of the internet's most watched videos. If you haven't seen it, you're in for an absolute treat. If you have seen it, you're in for an absolute treat. And now when I give you the context, I reckon about 20% of you are going to go, oh, yeah, I know it. So here's the context. There, it's not the hand thing. No, I am still doing it though, James. You're still doing the hand thing. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of kids somewhere in America making a skateboarding video. They're not great skaters. They're just ollieing off of some steps. One of them's got, you know, it's probably about 1983, some big old VHS camera. And this African-American bloke strolls by and decides to ask directions and so the blokes hello pizzle so the bloke's still got the camera rolling and he you know this fella just starts asking questions now i'll be honest with you he has got the crack attack about him i mean his wardrobe it's it's a crack attack and then what he goes on to say it it's, it's a crack attack. So if you haven't seen this, you're in for an absolute treat. Me and Bawley were crying with laughter. Um, again, I've seen it before. It's quite a long video. It's four minutes. I'll skip past some of the skating. We don't need all that. We just need the bloke wandering down. Here he is. So that's 22 seconds out of it. Listen to the genius of what this geezer says. The, the the crack madness of some of the lines he comes out with. And, you know, just the cult, just the references, where he's getting them from. And, 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 and it, it's quite something. Here we go, people. The video is known as The Funky Monkey is Coming. <coughs> okay, check it. You'll enjoy this. Absolute genius. I mean, you've got to blow your brains out quite a lot to be able to talk this kind of shit at this speed. Here we go. Crack attack. 
I'm trying to get to um, I'm trying to get to 62nd and North North Market. Go down there and get on the Market Frank. No, I'm not trying. I'm not training. I'm walking. All right, just walk right up Market. That street right there. Okay, right this street going this way. It was yeah. going north. So yeah. okay, quite you. Quite what, what kind of films you like to take? Skateboarding. Oh, skateboarding. Yeah. How long you been doing that? Mm, I don't know. A year. A year. Are you a good skateboarder? Yeah, I'm all right. I hear you. Now, you see, at this point, it's all right. The geezer's asked directions. And now he's just being a bit friendly. Oh, what what, what films are you taking? Taking's an odd angle. You a good skateboarder? Yeah, yeah. And you, you think now he's going to go, anyway, mate, thanks for the directions. See you later. Thank the Lord of Culture that he didn't and decided to stay. <laughs> Moslab says, oddly enough, I'm wearing the exact hat. <laughs> Moslab's got a crack attack on his box. Thankfully, he doesn't go. He decides to go into this. I make movies. Yeah? Yeah. What kind of movies? I make, I make uh, motion pictures. What space movies. <laughs> Do you like space? Yeah, I like space. I, spend, I film in California. Cool. My, my name of my company is Bella Mafia, Quackabella Records, incorporated by Rhyme Syndicate, Three Yellow Men Trillionaire Club. You got to think big. Three trillionaires. Because yeah. this is a trillion dollar industry. And we taking over the industry. We taking over the world. Yeah. And you know what we're going to do? Yeah. And we also, we're going to go two labels. It's only going to be two labels. And the other label is going to be Butt Naked Wonder, <laughs> Big Brother Thunder, and the Master Blaster <laughs> to cut off the little boys' wee-wees, the, the despicable ones. The little mm. boys can't get pussy off their mind. They're going to lose their <laughs> dick and nuts. And God don't make the little boys to take the pussy in the bitches, you know, with alcohol. So you gonna tell you gonna tell me the pain, pain, the, the pain you feel when you birth your first baby. Hell yeah. You know, and yeah. that's something the man need to know that the pain the woman go through when they do wrong to feel the pain, and maybe they won't do it no more. So all you men gonna be pregnant with babies. God bless you. Yeah, and that's gonna you. and that's gonna Stay be uh, that's why and that's gonna be 2009, 2010, been the rat coming to the to the world. Did you say Oklahoma? Oklahoma. Oh yeah. Oklahoma, Texas, New York, Philadelphia, around the world. It's gonna be a big nut bus, a purple nut. <laughs> And the purple pumpkin eaters is coming to eat all you motherfuckers, the real monster. And the purple haze. <laughs> uh, no, we're not smoking no purple haze. We eating y'all purple haze, motherfucker. Oh, and yeah. we eating y'all cocaine rock smokers. Cause it's a new rock coming to town. Purple rock cocaine. And it's not for sale. And it's taking y'all motherfucking dope smokers to the moon. Catch our vapors, you bitches, and suck our dick on camera. Woo! Ah, 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 ah! Eat, 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 eat! The funky monkeys is coming. Eat our shit and suck our dick, you hoe ass bitches. <laughs> In many ways, the original Red Pill. I mean, if you if you translate and interpret. That is the original red pill. I'm standing by that. I'm standing by it. So many things. There you go, 42. There you go. And it was riddled, riddled with, with clairvoyance and, and, and incredible predictions. <laughs> Charlie, I don't quite follow. Yep. Um, yeah, 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 another one. It's all in there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The funky monkey is coming. 
Right, let's go back to about 1985, I think it was. Now, this won't be so much fun for the Americans, I'm sure. But England was treated to a bit of American culture. Up until this point, England had seen an America that was glamorous, that was powerful, that was magical, you know, Everything that come out of America was larger than life and, 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 and it was like the future. America was like the future to English people. And then they gave us Manhattan Cable. <laughs> One in the chat, if you remember Manhattan Cable. Students and stay highs. Students, the unemployed and the stay highs will remember Manhattan Cable. Manhattan Cable was one of these very early... Um, public access TV channels. So if you could get hold of a video camera and set it up in your front room and get a blasting light to bleach out anything you're looking at, you could uh, make a show and it would go out on cable television, on Manhattan cable. And it was all shit. It was all shit. Clive James used to have a TV show and he'd use a lot of stuff from Manhattan Cable. Here's a fella who's decided to get on Manhattan Cable and uh, there's a woman playing the piano. She's going to introduce him. Now, you know the song from the pizza advert? When the moon hits the sun, it's a real pizza pie at some more. Right? We all know it from the pizza advert. Well, for some reason, this fella decided to sing that on Manhattan Cable. Now, you get, you, you'd imagine that he'd have rehearsed it or, dare I say, learnt the words. But no, rather than learn the words, after you've got past the three words you know, just, just make noises and go da 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 da, and then blag it. So this is that Samore Manhattan Cable style. Enjoy. This was when telly was telly. Wonderful times. Public access TV from New York, New York. This has been a nice uh, time for me. This year I have made 55 years teaching in this town. And for the students on this show... I mean, we'd never known an America like this. We, we'd not known... We didn't see America in its... You know, this is the arse end of Manhattan. You tell, a, you tell an English man about Manhattan, you know, they're thinking of Manhattan. They're thinking of the Hamptons. They're thinking of fucking breakfast at Tiffany's. And then it was like, no, this is Manhattan. Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a, a little bit of a change-up tonight go to the first united methodist church that includes me i go to the first united methodist church reverend jones bill jones opened our show last time and he's not here tonight so john baker's here bob spencer michelle casey and i all go to first united methodist church so john is going to sing a song that's very popular nowadays and it's christ the lord is risen today and he's going to do amora too okay right before he starts can we just can we just agree that this fella looks like Lon Chaney? <laughs> Hark at the Lon Chaney on that. Here we go. So that's Amore. Oh, Moslab, please. Is it is it the mother's skirt that, that done it for you? Here we go. So again, remember, people, he wasn't forced to do this. Learn the words if you're going to go on telly or, 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 or do this. It's your choice. We don't need to ask why. It's like tightrope walking. Well, this is what happens when you walk the tightrope and you haven't practiced. <laughs> Look at him. My name is John Dacre. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Hang on a minute. Hang on. That wasn't meant to happen, was it? That was the intro. Look, Moslab and Mega Essex boy. Um, he, that went wrong. That was the intro, wasn't it? And he spoke over it. And what it, it's already, oh, I've got to have that bit again. Hang on, it's too good. There you go. There's Sir Ultra Messick. Uh, Messick. 
ultra mega Essex boy in Moslab. A little, a little another look. At, I mean, she's got some cans on her. I'll give you that. I mean, they're around her waist and that. But, you know, if you're laying down, it don't really matter. Check out his intro. I'm all right, too, okay? My name is John Dacre. <laughs> it is risen today. Hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say hallelujah. To your voice and triumphs high. Hallelujah. <laughs> No, no, you no, no, you can't. No, no, that, that, no, no. What you know? One of the things in life that makes people interesting. One of the things in life that makes people successful. One of the things in life that makes someone an interesting companion, someone to talk to, is self-awareness. If people aren't, if people haven't. People who lack self-awareness are dull as fuck because the funny things in life are self-depreciating. The funny things in life are when you can laugh at yourself. The funny things in life is when you can work to your strengths. If you've got no self-awareness, you're, 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 you are a void. You're a void to yourself. And if you're a void to yourself, you're a void to everyone else. How did this creep think he could blag this? <laughs> It's ridiculous, but thank the Lord he done it. I'll take it back a bit because I love it so. Your voice in triumph, high, hallelujah. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's a more Right, we can agree he got that first line right he got that didn't he when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie it's amore right we'll have it again just i don't want to ruin his i don't want to ruin his rhythm but he got the first line moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie that's amore right okay what 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 yeah. yeah can we just have what again because that was beautiful Hits your eye like a big beautiful boy that's a more What? Some more Bells will ring, tingling ling, tingling ling, and the bell ring more. <laughs> Did you hear him go? <laughs> <laughs> no, just that a bit again. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You're in love. <laughs> you know that you feel some more. Right, hang on, right. Now I think we can all agree that has been an absolute catastrophe. That was fucked. He fucked that up, right? Now he thinks he's got away with it. I mean, did you go to the more and then go? Watch the smug ender. When he, he thinks he's pulled the wall, he thinks he's nailed it. Watch how he ends this as if fucking magnifico. Check out the end. I'll take it back for context. That you feel some more to me, but you see back in old Napoli. That's a Maury. <laughs> yeah, great. That that was great. That was great. That, I mean, I mean, if I ever finally get round to getting married, he's singing. 
<laughs> right. Um, <clears throat> now I played. Hello, Manny Moo. Good. To <laughs> Manny Moo's opening gambit. Superb. Biden speaking coach. Amazing. Oh, hi, John. All right. Hello, Osmeister. Good to see you, son. Right. Change of tempo. So calm yourself. I'll probably lose a few viewers for this, but sometimes you have to make those sacrifices. This is. I've got like four favourite authors. Five. And in no particular order. But David Foster Wallace, um, usually at the number one spot. Regard, that, it's not that important. He's a great writer. Now, I think I played a bit of this the other day. I certainly linked you to it. But he visited the, um, the, a, the Adult Video News Awards, right? And I'm going to play it from the top. It's two hours long, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll play. I mean, I'm going to be sitting here, you know, thinking, oh, God, everyone hates me. This is shit. But I know that this is a remarkable piece of writing. And I'd like to introduce you to David Foster Wallace through um, something as good as this, all right? So there's a weird bit of music at the beginning. I don't know why they do that. What is it? Some sort of literary. Oh, oh, it's here's some music because it's literary. Um, you know, we've all got our takes on porn, but this is a, a, a an incredible take because it is. You know, that's what makes a writer interesting. It's not the object they're looking at; it's the angle from which they're looking at it, and that's what David Foster Wallace had in Spades. He could he could look at something we've all seen a thousand times. But I look at it from a different angle, and and it, as a critique of porn, as a critique of the culture that produces and consumes porn, it's second to none. Now you're not going to get all of that from a couple of minutes, but I'm asking you, as scrubs, as friends, I know this won't be everyone's cup of tea, but if you know, maybe have a piss or make a cup of tea or something, but just. Maybe shut your eyes. I won't I won't interrupt it. I will play three minutes of this and then I'll link you to it. I've read this. It's him, it's actually David Foster Wallace reading it, which helps. But it's fucking brilliant. So see what I ask you as scrubs and friends, just to give it a go. You know, it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea. Nothing ever is. But for those of you that do like it, you might suddenly think, oh, I want a bit more of David Foster Wallace. And there's so much out there and it's very high quality, essentially cultural criticism. Here we go. I mean, it's called literary fiction, but, you know, what does that even mean? It's ridiculous. Check out a bit of uh, David Foster Wallace. Let me know you can hear it. Could someone? I will not interrupt. Big Red Sun. Quick note here, there's a first-person plural pronoun that gets used throughout. This piece was originally published by pseudonymously for weird reasons, and for equally weird reasons, it really can't be changed now. So that's why the we and your correspondence stuff. The American Academy of Emergency Medicine confirms it. Each year, between one and two dozen adult U.S. males are admitted to emergency rooms after having castrated themselves, with kitchen tools usually, sometimes wire cutters. In answer to the obvious question, surviving patients most often report that their sexual urges had become a source of intolerable conflict and anxiety. The desire for perfect release and the real-world impossibility of perfect, whenever-you-want-it release had together produced a tension they could no longer stand. It is to the 30-plus testosteronically afflicted males whose cases have been documented in the past two years that your correspondents wish to dedicate this article. And to those tormented souls considering autocastration in 1998, we wish to say, stop, stay your hand, hold off with those kitchen utensils and or wire cutters, because we believe we may have found an alternative. Every spring, 
The Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences presents awards for outstanding achievement in all aspects of mainstream cinema. These are the Academy Awards. Mainstream cinema is a major industry in the United States, and so are the Academy Awards. The awards' notorious commercialism and hypocrisy disgust many of the millions and millions and millions of viewers who tune in during prime time to watch the presentations. It is not a coincidence that the Oscar ceremony is held during TV's Sweeps Week. We pretty much all tune in, despite the grotesquerie of watching an industry congratulate itself on its pretense that it's still an art form, of hearing people in $5,000 gowns invoke lush cliches of surprise and humility scripted by publicists, etc., the whole cynical postmodern deal. But we all still seem to watch, to care. Even though the hypocrisy hurts, even though opening grosses and marketing strategies are now bigger news than the movies themselves, even though Khan and Sundance have become nothing more than enterprise zones. But the truth is that there's no more real joy about it all anymore. Worse, there seems to be this enormous unspoken conspiracy where we all pretend that there's still joy. That we think it's funny when Bob Dole does a visa ad and Gorbachev shills for Pizza Hut. That the whole mainstream celebrity culture is rushing to cash in and all the while congratulating itself on pretending not to cash in. Underneath it all, though, we know the whole thing sucks. Your correspondents humbly offer an alternative. Every January, the least pretentious city in America hosts the annual AVN Awards. The AVN stands for Adult Video News, which is sort of the variety of the U.S. porn industry. This thick, expensively designed magazine costs $7.95 per issue, is about 80% ads, and is clearly targeted at adult video retailers. Its circulation is approximately 40,000. Though the sublined vagaries of entertainment accounting are legendary, it is universally acknowledged that the U.S. adult film industry, at $3.5 to $4 billion in annual sales, rentals, cable charges, and video masturbation booth revenues, is an even larger and more efficient money-making machine than legitimate mainstream American cinema, the latter's annual gross commonly estimated at 2 to $2.5 billion. The US. I said I wouldn't interrupt, but did you hear that? Porn makes about twice as much as American mainstream cinema. This adult industry is centered in LA's San Fernando Valley, just over the mountains from Hollywood. One porn production company, Caballero Home Video, has its headquarters in a big Van Nuys duplex whose other half is the soundstage for Beverly Hills 90210. Some insiders like to refer to the adult industry as Hollywood's evil twin, others as the mainstream's big red sun. It is no accident that adult video news, a slick, expensive periodical whose articles are really more like infomercials, and its yearly awards both came into being in 1982. The early 80s, after all, saw the genesis of VCRs and home video rentals, which have done for the adult industry pretty much what TV did for pro football for pro football. From the December 11th, 1997 press release issued by AVN, everything that follows is a quotation, and by the way, it's verbatim. Quote, the nominations for the 15th annual AVN Awards were announced today. The passive mood here is a bit disingenuous. The release itself is announcing them. This year's awards show, commemorating AVN's 15th anniversary, celebrates history. Awards will be presented in a record 106 categories over a two-night period. The adult industry released nearly 8,000 adult releases in 1997, including over 4,000 new releases, non-compilation. AVN reviewed every new release, every, and this is verbatim, category this past year, logging over 30,000 sex scenes. At, say, an average of 90 minutes per movie, this means that some person or persons put in 1.4 years of nonstop continuous porn viewing. Hence your correspondence alternative for U.S. males so tortured by carnal desire that they are tempted to auto-neuter. Volunteer as a judge for the AVN Awards and spend 1.4 years gazing without rest at the latest in adult video. We guarantee that you will never thereafter want to see, hear, engage in, or even think about human sexuality ever again. Trust us on this. All five marginal and male print journalists assigned to cover the 1998 AVN Awards concur. 
even just watching the dozen or so big or high-profile adult releases of the past year, Bad Wives, Zazel, A Week and a Half in the Life of a Prostitute, Miscreants, New Wave Hookers 5, Seduce and Destroy, Butt Man in Barcelona, Gluteus to the Maximus, fried everyone's glandular circuit board. By the end of the awards weekend, none of us were even having normal biological first thing in the morning or jouncy bus ride between hotels erections. And when approached even innocently by members of the opposite sex, we all now recoiled as from a hot flame, which made our party a kind of strange and challenging breakfast gig, according to our Sunday morning waitress. Still quoting here, by comparison, Last year, there were approximately 375 films eligible for the Academy Awards that these voters, meaning different voters from the AVN voters, presumably, were required to see. AVN had to watch more than 10 times the amount of releases in order to develop these nominations. Usage and repetition here are verbatim again, though 4,000 divided by 375 is indeed over 10. Close quote. From the acceptance speech of Mr. Tom Byron, Saturday, January 10th, 1998, Caesars Forum Ballroom, Caesars Palace Hotel and Casino Complex, Las Vegas, Nevada. Upon winning AVN's 1998 Male Performer of the Year Award, and with no little feeling, quote, I want to thank every beautiful woman I ever put my cock inside, close quote. Laughter, cheers, ovation. From the acceptance speech of Ms. Gina Fine, Ibid, Upon winning AVN's 1998 Best Supporting Actress Award for her role in Rob Black's Miscreants, quote, Jesus, which one is this for? Miscreants? Jesus. That's another one where I read the script and said, oh shit, I am going to go to hell. Laughter. Cheers. But that's okay, because all my friends will be there too. Huge wave of laughter. Cheers. Applause. From the inter-award banter of Mr. Bobby Slayton, professional comedian and master of ceremonies for the 1997 AVNAs. Quote, I know I'm looking good, though, like younger, because I started using the special Grecian formula. Every time I find a gray hair, I fuck my wife in the ass. No laughter, scattered groans. Fuck you. That's a great joke. Close quote. Bobby Slayton a gravelly-voiced dice clay knockoff who kept introducing every female performer as the woman I'm going to cut my dick off for, and who astounded all the marginal print journalists in attendance with both his unfunniness and his resemblance to every apartment complex coke dealer we'd ever met, is mercifully absent from the 1998 awards gala. The 98 MC is one Robert Schimmel, alumnus of In Living Color and a Howard Stern regular. Schimmel looks like a depraved, deeply tan Wallace Shawn and is no less coarse than Bobby Slayton, but a lot better. He does a pantomime of someone attempting intercourse with a love doll he's been too lazy to blow up all the way. He contrasts the woeful paucity of his own ejaculate with the concussive orgasms of certain well-known male performers. Mr. Peter North, in particular, delivers what seem more like mortar rounds than bioemissions. Comparing these men's ejaculations to automatic lawn sprinklers I played you 10 minutes then, and I deliberately played you 10 minutes because I wanted you to realise the quality of that writing. Um, I'm sure most of you thought, fucking hell, this is going on a bit. That piece of writing is spectacular. He ends up meeting Max Hardcore. Max Hardcore is a man who abuses women uh, and films it and makes a living out of it. And he has been taken to court loads and loads of times and he dresses adult women up as children and gets them to say things like, I'm only 14, can you stop pissing inside my vagina? David Foster Wallace spends a few days with Max Hardcore, and it's fucking gross. I mean, it's, it's more disgusting and unpleasant, and I use the word very rarely degenerate, than the products Max Hardcore puts out. The way he is, the way he talks, the, the, his his relationship to people, women, himself, the world. Honestly, I just played you 10 minutes. I hope it just flew by. I will put the link to that. And I, I, I urge you, if you want to get an understanding, that, you know, that was like, what, 
30 years ago he was talking think about what the internet's done for porn someone said it that was 98 and that you know in 1998 the porn industry was taking nearly twice as much as hollywood today it's probably 10 20 times as much i'll put the link honestly it's a fucking brilliant piece of writing and to have it read by the author is, is an absolute treat so uh yeah check that out people it, it's it's on my telegram if you want to watch it later or just ask me i'll i'll dig that out for anyone right um another massive jump but that was quite cool that we played 10 minutes and i actually gained four viewers i was really thinking because I, I knew i was going to play it snide and just let it run um we actually gained four i thought i'd have lost about 20. Uh, that was the, that was the idea, Mr. Bullet, and so that turned out uh, quite nice. Um, uh, yeah, it's fucking awful. It, yeah, there you go. He got prison time for some of his films. I didn't know that. I, I knew he'd ended up in court. Yeah, he, he abuses women. That's what he does and, and laughs at it. Uh, that's funny, hurting people. You horrible bastards. Um, right. Uh, Vincent can hear nodules scraping. I'll have some agua. Um, a couple of donations come through. Let's have a look. Um, the boy blogs. Fitting story for No Nut November. There you go. Billy, give the whole thing a listen. I think you'll find it really interesting. Andy Mack made it to the end of the month. Have it. Nice one, Andy. IJB, what's cracking? Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, IJB. Um, we're running out of time, people. So is Patrice O'Neill uh, a very, very good comedian? Sadly dead now. It, this is a lovely bit about the difference between men and women. It might get yeeted, but I want to risk it. What a, what a great comic Patrice O'Neill was. Uh, the difference between men and women. He, he nails it. Um, is it? Can we start it from about there, maybe? That power that you have. Which is our weakness. All right, this will do. Can weakness. you hear that? It's very difficult. I'm telling you, man. Like, I don't want to want to be with other women, ever. Like, I want to just walk down the street and go, I never need to look at another woman again because I'm with the last woman I'm ever going to be with. And I'm like, <laughs> but it ain't real. It's just... <laughs> like, no guy wants to cheat and hurt his woman, man. That hurts. First of all, think about what cheating is for a second, ladies. Cheating is a man. He sneaks out of his own house to go, like, find some happiness behind your back so your feelings aren't hurt. <laughs> Cheating is for you. It's not... <laughs> That's not the bit I'm playing it for. It's you'll you'll for know me. it. We don't want to hurt you. If you give a lie detector test. Oh, listen, man, right. Hang on. So it's important you get that last bit. It's a bit quiet, but he says, if you give a lie detector test to a man, right, listen to this. I want to hurt you. If you give a lie detector test to a man and a woman and ask them the same questions, man, we would pass them both up to a point where it's like, hey, Ask a woman, you love your man, you love your family, you love your home, you love what you built. Yep. All right. You see Brad Pitt or Denzel Washington or whatever standing there, would you risk everything you built with your man just to sleep with him? And women, look, they go, nah, I wouldn't. And they, they'll pass the test. They'd be like, eh, you know, I, I, it's, they look good, but I wouldn't. Ask guys the same thing, you know, boom. Love your woman, the kids, the house. Yeah. All right, you, you see that girl passed out behind a dumpster? <laughs> <laughs> Would you risk everything for a passed out woman behind a dumpster? <laughs> I don't want to, but look at her with garbage on. She looks so cute with garbage on. <laughs> It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. The woman gets Brad Pitt, some passed out bird behind the bins. Good Lord. 
Right, uh, Patrice O'Neill, check him out. Now, a couple of things to show you here. Right, we are coming to the end. The footy starts very shortly. Right, um, a couple of super chats. Well, no, just the one. Thank you. Vincent, I just saw you said you're skin, man. Don't skin yourself more on my behalf. I mean, everyone's skin. I I, I love streaming. You're And you're absolutely, I think, Moslav, I think he was their best guest. I, I don't think Anthony and Opie are great comics, but they're great hosts. And Patrice's uh, uh, focus, focus, uh, I think you're. I think you're right. I think he was. Uh, he was brilliant on there. Yeah, good call. Um, thank you, Vincent. Uh, hello, Snoops. Good to see you, son. Uh, that's brilliant, though, isn't it? Right. Check out this fella, Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland is a TV evangelist. He's got a private jet. Three point six million quid's worth of private jet. Now, just think how many desperate old biddies need to put their hand in their pocket, get out their last two dollars and put it in one of those bags they take around his conventions. How many? Well, I could tell you, 1.8 million <laughs> if it's two dollars. But, you know, the geezer's minted. He looks like the devil as well. He, he's got, let me see if I can get a picture of him actually. He's so frightening. There's a reason for me telling you all this. This does go somewhere. He got outed on one of those, you know, stick a camera in your face. Oh, do you think it's right that you own 20 mils worth of property? I don't want to. I don't want to find a picture that's unnecessarily. Yeah, this is when he. This is when they stuck the mic in his face. He started fighting them. This man of God. This God's messenger. Now, you know, Christians do fight. But um, have a look at this fellow. Hang on, I know you can't see it yet. This is Kenneth Copeland. Look at this. I mean, I find it miraculous. I know about hypnotism. I know about um, group hysteria. I know about human psychology. These people fascinate me because they're masters of it. Absolute masters. In one of Kenneth Copeland's things where he'll have something like 20,000 people there, he'll walk out of there with nearly a million. That's a lot of money. People are putting like hundreds in there. And he, he says to them, every dollar you invest in my, my ministry will be times a thousand in, in paradise. He outright like, says that. You know, your money will be multiplied in heaven if you give it to me. And they do. And that's a, that's that's that is more skilled than Darren Brown. That's more skilled than David Blaine. That is mirac that is a miracle. Ironically, that's a miracle. Have a look at the fellow I'm gonna tell you a little bit about. Well, show you a couple of things. This is Kenneth Copeland. I mean, you wouldn't give him your fucking fish to look after. <laughs> you fucking hell. Fucking hell. Look at him. Let me grab another one just so you know I'm not. You know, I'll just grab a, a random picture here. Look. Look. I just, you saw that was random as they come. Let's have a look what this one looks like. Look. You know, he's got something... There's something certainly devilish about him. You know, there's a lizard under there, man. Right, so this is Kenneth Copeland haunting you from ever on. <laughs> right? Now, let's uh, get rid of that. <laughs> now, what, what, what way around am I going to do this? This one first. Right. One of Kenneth Copeland's little lies... And, and this is what makes him a genius. He, you have to keep going. Once that show starts, they have warm-up acts. They have warm-up acts at these sort of TV. Because not only have you got a live, like, you know, um, what do they call them? Um, um, what's it called? Like stadium or whatever. But there's also online and on telly in those days, whatever. So there's a lot of money being piped down. Now, they have warm-up acts. They get everyone into this state of hysteria, this God glow and all that. You know, that's what keeps the money flowing. He hasn't got time to stop. He's not allowed to. 
you know, they've got them into this, you know, it's almost like money means nothing sort of hypnosis. Just put your monopoly money to me. Ah, God, God, Jesus, Jesus, money, money. So he's not, he can't really lose his rhythm. There will be times where he'll be silent because they'll build up to it and sort of, you know, and it'll be sort of like, can you hear me, Lord? You know, but when he's just on his, he's got to keep the rhythm going. And what he does when he runs out of bullshit, he starts talking in tongues, speaking in tongues, as it's uh, more commonly known. He starts speaking in tongues. So he'll just be talking like, you know, Jesus said, I will spite you. I will spite you. I will this. And then Jesus, he just blags it as if he's got, I, I don't know, is it the devil in him or Jesu? I don't know. But it's a fucking blag. I've got a little bit here of him doing that blag. Watch how... <laughs> Honey Monster, Alistair. When Alistair went Christian, he saw that money turn up and he just stayed there, didn't he? Alistair properly got on the God grip. And, then, and, and oh, do you remember Unwashed tried it, didn't he? Unwashed was a start in his streams. This is today's Bible reading. <laughs> it was like, oh, yeah, 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 go on. Good try. He was doing, Unwashed was doing like religious streams. Until the money didn't roll in, because Alistair's people took it all. Uh, that's a really good call. Pizzle says it's real. Sorry, mate. I should have known. I should have known. Right, so check him out here when he does his little blag. Right, this isn't a, a spectacular video. This is just his little tongues blag. Check it. Oh, hang on. Sorry, because I fucked about a bit. I've got to redo the audio, because StreamYard doesn't work properly. Uh, so check you'll, you'll, you'll know the bit I mean because you'll hear him start going blah, 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 blah. Our offerings will go toward the outreaches of Kenneth Copeland Ministries and and uh, especially Kenneth Copeland Ministries Canada and it is and and the the territories under which the Canadian office uh, is Shigamo. <laughs> Fuck off. Hang on a minute. So so he's he's basically explaining where all the money's gonna go. The bloke has got real estate of about three quarters of a billion dollars, right? He's got a three and a half million dollar jet. This is some some time back. He's fucking minted. It's it's a religious organization. Oh, it's tax free. It's tax free. It's religious. It's tax free like Scientology. I think Scientology might have lost their tax-free exemption, actually. I'm not sure. I, I don't want to say too much about them, or they'll probably come through the fucking ab sale down the house and be in here. But you see him just stumble then, and that's when he just went, oh, fuck it. Gabuta What? Watch, I'll just, I'll take that back. You watch, watch him realise he don't know what he's saying, because he's now about 400 years old. And, uh, you know, Kenneth Copeland begot Aizu, who begot Chakstar, who begot Gibata Kasapi. Watch, watch him realise he's dried up and then just lie as if he's possessed. Watch. Listen out for it. The territories under which the Canadian office uh, is... Yeah. Shigama. <laughs> The movement of the Spirit of God. What? What? That Hang on. Now, uh, have I got something wrong here? Is he speaking Yiddish or something? Or, uh, that, that's not a language. Did you hear him say cinema? He went glog, glick, glog, cinema, click, chlip, That's just nothing. That's that's just nothing. Did you see the audience? All, they were like, yeah, here we go. Yeah. He's talking gibberish. Yay. That wasn't a language. It may, may well have been, but I don't think it was. I've watched it a few times. Right, anyway. So you've got an idea of the, the, the fellow we're talking about. Now, this is from another bloke's content, but this is a very famous incident. One of the things these people do is the old faith healing. They go up to someone who's got like crutches and they put their hand on their head and they're like, 
God spite the demon of the knees that won't let this lady stand up. You don't need those crutches. Cast away those crutches. Now, when you've got the main man of his hand on your head screaming at you, you've got 50,000 people in an auditorium watching you, your adrenaline, which is a painkiller, your noradrenaline, which is a painkiller, your dopamine, which is a painkiller, your serotonin, which is a painkiller, are going to be fucking flying around you. You could stick a pin through your eye in that state and not know about it. That's why they can stand up. And he's like, you you never need to go back to those crutches. Yes, she will. Once she stood up for about two minutes and goes, oh, fuck. But of course, they don't follow it up. It looks great. That's, that's hypnotism, by the way. That's how it works. It, there's a bit of social proof there. And it's just, you know, being open to suggestion and a lot of, a lot of drugs in your body. But it doesn't always turn out so good. One they frequently do is get people to stand up out of wheelchairs. But sometimes they can't because their legs don't work. And however much adrenaline and dopamine, no. If your legs don't work, they don't work. You'll know the bit that I'm talking about. There's no point in me ruining the surprise. Check this out. You'll see him do a couple of these wheelchair tricks, but you wait. <laughs> I'm... Excuse me. I will tell you, he just pushes a bloke over. <laughs> There's a geezer in a wheelchair going, oh, 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 oh. and old Copeland just pushes him. He man, his wheelchair just fall up, and he just it, Copeland just walks off. <laughs> it's like, yeah, just fuck him, fuck him. You've pushed him over. That's all right. He's he's, he's better now. Here we go. Go on, son. Let me know you got audio. Word of the living God. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Beverly Rhodes, I touch you in the name, in the name, in that name of Jesus. Be thou made whole from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at the phone number, right? To pr for prayer or to testify. I bet that's about $3 a minute, that fucking, that, that, line, that line. Now that that is flowing through your body is him. Ooh, it is the no, it's adrenaline. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It is the spirit of Glory goodness. It is the spirit of God. Glory it is God. the spirit of love. Glory it is the spirit God. that Glory. raised you up in the first place. <laughs> it is the spirit. That... <laughs> and she had to sit down. Yeah. Nice one, Jesus. That has been with you and worked with you since you were young. And it is the spirit that she was carried you another through. Go, but... Beverly Rhodes. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank yeah, you, Lord on. Jesus. Down, By the name of Jesus. And in with the... With, yeah, it... Look how fucking frightening he is. Oh, is he going to go into his jibbity juke? Oh, no. oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. oh yes, he is. Again, check out, check out. He just dries up. He dries up. He doesn't know what to say, so he goes for chicken. It's like he's ordering some kind of Balinese curry. <laughs> check it. And, and with the with, yeah, oh no oh yeah yes kiskebadara with the help of the spirit of the living God the representative of Jesus Himself I touch you in that name in that name in that name glory to God glory to God glory to God in the name in the name look at her weave it's two and a half inches off her real barnet oh. That smile got me right there. Yeah, that got me. Glory to God in the name. Oh, in the name. Glory to God. I see something in those eyes. I see love. I see the power. I see the word. I see that when they don't stand up, I move on rapidly. I love you, sir. In the name of Jesus. And I touch you in that name, in the name, and in his power, in the spirit of the living God, the spirit of power, the spirit of strength, now flowing through the legs, <laughs> through the legs, didn't stand through up. the mind, through the thoughts. There you go. Didn't, didn't, like I said, this is someone else's content, so that's why there's that.
Yeah, when, when nothing happens, he just keeps walking. I mean, look at this bird here. You know, she hasn't got any working legs. I'm not digging her out for that. That's just the way it is. But when it don't work, he moves on. Wait till you see this. You'll see it. Glory to God. Look at your pretty self. <laughs> right, right. Look at him here. Did you see him? Did you see this fella put his hands up? Me, me, me. I'll take it back. Just a fraction. Just a fraction. I want you, I want you to see I want you to see him. He wants his attention, right? The geese in the green t-shirt. Oh. Look at your pretty no, self. No, no, no. <laughs> me, me, me. Hallelujah. You are precious in my son. Are you going to stand up or am I going to fuck off and move on to the next one? Hurry up. I've got money to make. And you're precious in Jesus' sight. In that name. Yeah, his, his dad didn't give you any legs in that. But, you, you know, don't take it out on the son, eh? That's the Holy Spirit. That's him. Praise God. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, nothing. The, the fellow in the green, did you see him going, that's it, that's it, bro, that's it, Jesus, Jesus. He wants to show this bloke that he'll play along, right? For your name and for the power and the word of the living God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, stand up, thank you, Lord Jesus. Here we go, watch, watch. Praise God. <laughs> this is what happens when Kenneth Copeland prays for you. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> but most of these people end up smiling and acting like it's okay. And now we'll see Kenneth Copeland going over to the disturbed man in the wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, that's him going through you right now. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, it is. Take it. Yes, it I is. Take it. I take it. I take it. Glory to God. You're not bound to this chair. The day You're of not bound to chair, no. In the name what? of Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. <Lord>. Thank you. <laughs> Can you believe? <laughs> Can you believe? It? Yay! Yay, concussion! Not only wheelchair bound, but concussed as well. He just fucking just throws him over and <laughs> look at the screen now. Look at Copeland looking at him thinking, oh fuck man, I might get sued. <laughs> Ludwig says result. <laughs> Hello, Ludwig. That's fucking savage, man. Let's have it again. Absolutely brutal. God, you're not bound to this chair. The day will come you'll walk out of it. In the name of Jesus. Mind your head, Mike, mind your head. Thank you, Lord. Yay. Thank you, Lord. Yay. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thanks. Now then, you guys, just help him up. <laughs> help him up. Power of God's all over him. He's not hurt. He's not hurt. He's not hurt. He's not hurt. Praise. It's not your. It's not your place to say whether he's hurt, really, is it? In fairness, um, there you go, people. Uh, that was uh, Kenneth Copeland, not to be uh, um, confused with Stuart Copeland of the Police and the Equalizer soundtrack. Uh, talking the soundtracks. Um, and Jesus and Jesus, if you want to donate to this stream, there's still a bit of time. I'm going to play a song. For, I'm going to play a song that I haven't played you before, um, but you might have heard it. I based it on the Sonatogen vitamin advert. Um, right, people, I'm, I'm five minutes late for the football. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope you enjoyed that, mixing it up a bit, shaking it up a little bit. I'm doing another cultural artifacts roll VT. I'm just going to grab a guest. I might be going on I Hypocrite's channel. He sent me an invite, uh, but I was in Thailand, so I missed it. But I'm sure we can arrange something else soon. Thanks to everyone who donated. Thank you, especially Brian, for that whopper. Um, but also everyone, because it's always nice. Thanks to Rags and the Boy Cray for looking after the place. And most of all, thanks to all of you lot for keep coming back here. I love it. It's a pleasure to stream, pleasure to have an audience. I hope you enjoyed it. Something a bit different. If you want to hear the rest of that David Foster Wallace piece, it's called Big Red Sun. Spell S-O-N, Sun, not S-U-N. Okay. Um, thank you very much. I will put your messages on the screen as I play you out with a song from 90s band Household. This is called All Right. Yeah, it's not one we've had before. Interesting.
Look after yourselves, people. Don't forget, I put a Dragon's Den video out today, so if you haven't watched that, you um, can. Ta-da! Right, actually, hands, but I've got to eat. See me tumble by your window. Always a pleasure. See me get sunny in the moonlight. He's a moderator, isn't he? Of course. Sorry, Moz. I don't see the spanners on some oh, on uh, what's it called Streamyard. I remember you, sir. I remember Lomax. certainly was earlier here. Hello, by the way, Ian. I don't think I said hello to you. Agreed. I'll grab that David Foster Wallace link as well. For people who might want to watch it. But I don't want to Yeah. I can't recommend it enough, people. Yeah. That one. Sixteen months a member for Marzi Pan. Fair play, mate.
a lot to me actually Ian because I wasn't sure you know nothing is going to be for everyone and I knew that it was uh, a bit cerebral and a bit a bit focused but um, yeah that means a lot to me Ian and much appreciated look after yourselves people go on piss off down your own end or you get a clip around the ear you dirty buggers Hoiter!